What's up guys, Andrew here. Today I have my full review on the chest release Lenovo Z51. The Z51 is kind of like the Y50's little brother. I would even say this model is in between the Y40 and the Y50. There are multiple configurations of this model. All models come with a dual core Broadwell chip, however some of the higher end models feature an AMD Radeon R9 M375, which is a dedicated GPU, and that's the model we're going to look at today. Let's kick off this review by talking about the design and build quality. The Z51 is mostly constructed out of plastic, but the palm rest has a brushed metal finish that adds a nice touch. The weight comes in at chest over 5 pounds, and the thickest point is 0.97 inches. The design is pretty sleek for the most part, with the exception of these huge bezels. They remind me of my first Toshiba laptop in 2001. Come on Lenovo, you're trying to bring that old school look back? Alright, let's get back on track. The exterior is plastic, and the surface attracts a lot of fingerprints, so keep those fingers clean before handling this laptop. Overall, I would have to say, for a mid-range laptop, the design and build is pretty solid. For your ports on the right side, you got your Kensington lock, a DVD drive, which is pretty rare, an SD card reader, USB 2, and your headset microphone jack combo. The SD card does stick out a little bit, so keep that in mind when putting this notebook in your bag. On the left side, you got your Nova 1K recovery pin, which will provide easy access to restore, two USB 3s, HDMI, gigabit ethernet port, VGA, exhaust port for your fans, and your charging port. Let's talk about display performance. I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans. This display is awful. It's a 1080p TN panel that has horrible viewing angles and low color gamut. I know Lenovo had to cut some corners here and there to make some profit, but damn, did they have to give us such a horrible display? Here's some scores for the color gamut. For the sRGB, I got a score of 62%, which is embarrassing and the Adobe RGB came in at 47%. The Z51 features a standard full-size smile-shaped keyboard, the keys have adequate key travel, and they offer good tactile feedback. You also get a 10Q numeric keypad for those of you that like to crunch a lot of numbers. Now the biggest downside to this keyboard is the lack of a backlit keyboard. I understand that the base model doesn't have one, but come on Lenovo, even the high-end models with the AMD GPU got screwed over? Trackpad performance has been pretty good. The surface offers good resistance, and the overall size of the trackpad is adequate for a laptop this size. Two finger scrolling and tracking has been smooth, however, multi-touch was a bit choppy. And another complaint I have is the buttons. They are poorly designed, I would have to press down very firmly to get any response. Maybe I got a defective trackpad because it just didn't feel normal. The processor powering this laptop is a dual core Broadwell i7-5500U. The performance is good for many applications like programming light photo and light video editing. This CPU also did a decent job of powering this laptop when playing games. I thought the dual core would be the bottleneck, but I was quite surprised that it held its ground. Here are some benchmarks for the Core i7-5500U. For the single core score I got 2811, and the multi-core score came in at just over 5700, followed by Cinebench R15 with a CPU score of 262CB. Here are some CPU temperatures during casual use. The average was around 52 degrees Celsius, and the maximum was around 57 degrees Celsius. This was with basic productivity like web browsing, Netflix, and word processing. We'll take a look at temperatures after playing games in just a bit. If you choose to go with the base model, you'll only get the Intel HD 5500. But if you spring for the high-end models, you'll also get the AMD Radeon R9 M375. It is based on the older Cape Verde architecture, and the major downsides is the DDR3 memory interface. And here are some benchmarks for this AMD GPU. For the 3D Mark Advanced Edition Firestrike, came in at 1540, followed by Skydiver 1.0, came in at 5502, and our last benchmark is Cinebench R15. The OpenGL test came in at 47.03 frames per second. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play many of today's games on low to medium settings. Here's a quick demo of GTA 5 running at 1600x900 on low settings. Keep in mind you can get a much better frame rate if you drop the resolution to 1366 by 768 Overall, the performance from the M370X could barely keep up with GTA 5. With that being said, lighter duty games like League of Legends ran flawlessly on very high settings at 1920 by 1080p. After 30 minutes of GTA 5, the average CPU temperature was around 74 degrees Celsius and the max was 85 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are pretty good considering how demanding GTA 5 is. Even after some extended gameplay, the exterior of the Z51 remained pretty cool despite being put under pressure. 
As you can see here, the highs were around 32 to 39 degrees Celsius. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new Z51. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Speaker performance from the two bottom facing speakers were about average. The sound levels were decent. With that being said, it really lacked that low end punch that the Y50 has. The average decibel was around 65, with a high of up to 70 decibels. And here's a quick sound test in action. Okay, let's dive into battery performance. You're getting a 41 watt hour battery pack that will get you roughly three to three and a half hours with normal productivity. Now, if you plan on playing games on the battery pack, you'll get around an hour to an hour and a half of gaming. The one terabyte hard drive is adequate. It's just a tad faster than the traditional 5400 RPM hard drive, thanks to the eight gigabyte of onboard SSD cache. However, I would recommend upgrading to an SSD for the best performance. Speaking about upgrades, you can also max out your RAM to 16GB thanks to the two DIMM slots on board. Wi-Fi performance on the Intel AC3160 has been great. It's not as stellar as the bigger brother of the AC7265, but the performance during Grand Theft Auto V Online has been a great experience. So let's get to the conclusion of the Lenovo Z51. The specs are pretty good for a mid-range laptop. It offers a fast and efficient dual-core i5, 8GB of RAM, and a fairly capable AMD Radeon R9 M375. The major downsides is the horrible TN panel. The viewing angles and colors were just not up to par. If I were you, I would save a little more and get the Y50 with the new IPS panel. Those new models are much better, and you can even get a base Y50 with an IPS panel for around $849.99. And if you chose to go with a quad-core i7 IPS model, that one will set you back $899. The pricing of the Z51 chest does not make sense when you configure it with the AMD Radeon. Hopefully we'll see a price drop soon because I would not recommend the Z51 with the pricing structure they currently have. Either drop the price of the AMD model to $699 or just save up for the much more capable Y50. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the Lenovo Z51. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you did not enjoy it, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.